Hey guys, welcome back. Um, we have another lesson today. I miss wagers and we are going to continue reading um, the Northwest Coast Peoples. And remember, this is an informational text giving us all kinds of information about people from the Northwest Coast found in our text collection. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Our learning intentions for today are that we are learning to analyze causes and effects so we can explain events in a historical text. So as I said, this is an informational text based on real history. And so we have to explain like what is happening and why. So that is one of our success criteria. What happened and why did it happen? That's like the cause and the effect. So we'll get into that at the end of our lesson. Your foundational skills for today are decoding multisyllabic words. And multisyllabic words have more than one syllable. So, you know, when you count the syllable of a word, you think like um, Northwest Coast peoples. So, Northwest has two syllables, um, Coast has one syllable, and then peoples had two syllables again. So, it's like when you're clapping along with the sounds of the word. Um, so, today you're, you are going to practice reading and decoding. Um, related words. So we talked about related words yesterday, and those are words with the same base word. So these related words that we have, you have the word curious and curiosity, erupts and eruptions, exact, exactly, large, largest, observed, observation, predict, predicting, prediction, regular, regularity. And all of those words will be found in this um, practice read called Old Faithful. So enjoy reading that and learning more about Old Faithful. And also remember to focus on those related words. Moving on to vocabulary, we have the word traditional. And we will see that on 115, page 115. Our picture here, we have Snoopy um, eating a turkey. It says Christian missionaries tried to convert the people to their way of worshiping and ins insisting that people give up their traditional way of life. So what do you think traditional means? So I'm thinking about um, how Snoopy is eating the turkey and I know every um, year on Thanksgiving, most Americans eat turkey because that is something that we do um, every year. It's a long established custom or belief that has been passed on. And so in this sentence, we'll learn more about what these Christian missionaries were trying to do to the people of the Northwest Coast. But remember that traditional or a tradition is a long established custom, something that you do or a belief that you have that's been passed on over time. So right here, we have a large picture. I went ahead and put both pages together so you can see the whole picture. So I am going to read this page from the text collection since I know the text on the screen is kind of small. This is called Come One, Come All. An important event such as a wedding, the naming of a child, or coming of age ceremony was marked with a big feast called a potlatch. The word comes from the Chinook word, meaning to give away. To show his wealth and social standing, the person holding the potlatch gave elaborate gifts to all who attended. Families sometimes worked and saved for years to be able to throw a potlatch. So we can see here in the picture, that we they are having this potlatch where it's an it's an elaborate ceremony or like an elaborate like party type thing where they are instead of like like your birthday party you get gifts okay the person throwing the party is actually giving gifts to everyone that comes on this page we notice that we do have a couple of stop and think questions so as i'm reading i want you to think about the answers to these questions so the first one is who were the first European groups to explore and settle in the Northwest Coast? The second one is in what ways did the arrival of the outsiders threaten the existence of the Northwest Coast peoples? All right, so keep those in mind as I read. Outsiders arrive. Russians were the first to record reaching the area in 1741. In 1774, Spanish ships sailed up the Pacific coast from Mexico and encountered the Haida. Britain sent Captain James Cook to claim a foothold in the area in 1778. Russia and Britain were mostly interested in trading for sea otter fur. Eventually, Russian, British, and American traders competed for the fur trade. 
The people of the Northwest Coast were shrewd traders, and they were happy to exchange fur pelts for guns, iron, sugar, blankets, flour, and sails for their canoes. However, the contact with the new arrivals brought disastrous results. Hmm. So right there, I've already answered the first question. Who were the first European groups to explore and settle in the Northwest Coast? Well, those, it starts off by saying, Russians were the first to record reaching, so that's number one, and then it goes with the Spanish, and then Britain came along as well, and eventually Americans came too, but Americans weren't necessarily European settlers. And here we go in this caption right here. It says, outsiders carried diseases that had never before existed in the Americas. Since the people had never been exposed to these diseases, they had no immunities to them. Therefore, when one person caught a disease, it spread rapidly, wiping out whole communities. By some estimates, the Northwest Coast people lost 90% of their population between 1800 and 1900. Above is a Haida cemetery. So they lost 90% of their population. That means like nine out of 10 people died in that 100 years. The next one says, the reduction in population had a significant effect on the Northwest Coast culture. Survivors of epidemics gathered together in combined villages, but this sometimes led to fierce competition for leadership titles in the new villages. Leadership had always been determined by wealth as expressed in potlatch giveaways. Trade had be brought even more wealth into the area. So the competition for leadership took the form of more and more elaborate potlatches. In some cases, to show how great their wealth was, people destroyed goods instead of giving them to others. Then lastly, here at the bottom, it says, before long, the animals that the people had depended on for food had been hunted for fur almost to extinction. For food and other supplies, the people had to rely more and more on trading posts set up by the Russians, Spanish, and British. Traders kept increasing the price of needed supplies to force the people to provide more furs. Sometimes the owners of the trading post refused to sell supplies or closed up and moved away. Many of the people starved. So in what ways did the arrival of these outsiders threaten the existence of these Northwest Coast peoples? Let's think. Well, in this first little caption area, we read about how there were epidemics. That means like big sicknesses that caused a lot of the settlers or the Northwest Coast people to die because they had no immunity to the disease. So they got sick and they had no immunity in their body built up to help them get better. So a lot of people just died of sickness. And then it said that since they lost so many people, they had to form new villages. And that also caused problems because they fought over who was going to be the leader. So that was another problem with their existence. And then lastly, it said before long, um, the animals that they would normally eat had been hunted um, for their furs, like the sea otters. They'd been hunted to their furs almost to extinction. That means that no more are left in the area. And so that caused them to have to um, trade more with the Russians and the Spanish or the British, um, but that didn't really work out so well for them because then they just had to give them more of the sea otter and then their food was even more scarce. So then they were starting to starve. So lots of problems for the Northwest Coast people. All right, and on the next page, let's see what else is happening. At the bottom here, Traders had no interest in taking land from the Northwest Coast people, but in the 1840s, settlers began to arrive and wanted land. Factories for canning fish were built on the best salmon rivers. Lumber companies began logging. Gold was discovered and, and miners flocked to the area. Hmm. And right here it says, the governments of Canada and the United States supported the settlers and disregarded the rights of the Northwest Coast people. The government set up reservations called reserves in Canada. These tracts of lands were used to usually located at winter villages. Any land not part of an established reservation was considered to belong to the government and opened for settlement. Thus, the people were denied the right to land that they had roamed for centuries. So again, the Northwest Pe Coast people have been here forever, but now these governments are coming and taking the land away from them. Then lastly, government agents tried to convince the people to live as European Americans did. 
Christian missionaries tried to convert the people to their way of worshiping, insisting that the people give up their traditional way of life, so the way that they have done things for years and years. Some children were sent to boarding schools where they were punished if they spoke in their language. In 1884, the Canadian government banned potlatches and secret dancing societies. Some people defied the ban and went to jail. Others continued them in the guise of Christmas parties or charitable giving, but many obeyed the law, in effect, giving up their culture. The ban was not lifted until 1951. So it sounds like life was pretty difficult for the people of the Northwest Coast. And we have another stop and think question on this page. So I want you to be thinking about what details in the text explain how the Northwest Coast people have tried to preserve their culture. That means to keep it going. So it says Northwest Coast Nations Today. Today, thousands of Native Americans live along the Northwest Coast, some in reservations or reserves and others in cities and towns. The people in the same region who speak related languages are called a nation. Governed by chiefs and elders, the nations work together, work to raise awareness of their traditions, languages, beliefs, and ceremonies. Several nations have their own schools. Their languages and way of life were nearly destroyed, but the people of the Northwest Coast have survived and are determined to flourish. In recent years, the population has increased, though the number of people speaking the native language is still small. We'll go right here. Northwest Coast people continue to fight for the right to their land and culture. They have also fought against racism for their rights as citizens of the U.S. or Canada. In 1912, the Alaska Native Brotherhood was formed. By 1922, it had won the right to vote, two years before Native Americans in the continental U.S. In the late 1930s, the group started a movement to restore totem poles as a way to reclaim part of their people's heritage. In 1944, the U.S. Native Americans formed the National Congress of American Indians. This group works to keep tribes and tribal life alive. So again, right there, there was a detail that was explaining how they're preserving their culture. It said that this group um, um, started that movement to restore, restore totem poles as a way to reclaim part of their heritage. So they started remaking totem poles again. Then here it says, in the 1850s, government treaties with the Northwest Coast people guaranteed them the right to fish in their traditional fishing grounds. Over the years, commercial and sport fishers used and sometimes blocked access to the traditional fishing areas. More recently, Native Americans trying to practice a traditional way of life have come into conflict with environmentalists and animal rights activists. In 1999, the Maka held their first whale hunt in 70 years and harpooned a gray whale from a canoe. Some criticized them for this, but other groups have defended the Native Americans' rights to their traditional way of life. So again, other ways that they're trying to preserve their culture. We had this group that went out and they hunted for a whale and harpooned a whale, which was something that they would have done traditionally. And right here, in the 1960s, Kwakwa Kwakwaks chief James Seward wanted to restore the sense of community that people had when many families lived together. He and the others decided to build a plank house for the community in Albert Bay, British Columbia. It opened in 1966. The house posts have carved totems of Thunderbird and Grizzly Bear and crests from local tribes. The front of the house shows a killer whale or orca. Here, the people can immerse themselves in their art and culture. So again, one more way that they preserved their culture. How was that? Right, they built their, a new plank house um, so that way people could visit and think about their culture. And a few more things. Right here it says, some of today's Northwest Coast artists work in traditional styles. Others use traditional elements to create brand new styles. Bill Reed is a Haida artist. He has created small sculptures as well as a full-size totem poles. The Raven and First Men above shows the first people attempting to escape a shell. So that's this piece of art right here. Then in the middle, it says some of the people have revived the custom of potlatch. As in former times, a potlatch is a celebration. There is singing and dancing. New members are adopted into clans. People may be given new names to honor them. And as in the past, gifts are given. Though today the gifts may include canned salmon, homemade jellies, and boxes of fruit. And lastly, like Native Americans all over the U.S. and Canada, people of the Northwest Coast enjoy attending powwows, a cultural gathering and dance celebration, and performing traditional dances. 
So that is our reading. That is all for the people of the Northwest Coast peoples. And remember, we said that this is a historical text. And remember, a historical text gives factual information about the past. Informative texts explain events, including what happened and why. So when we're looking at this and we're thinking about our skills for today and thinking back to those success criteria, um, what happened is actually like an effect and why it happened is the cause. So we are going to use a cause and effect graphic organizer, that's part of our success criteria, to explain what happened and why in this text. So let's look at page 114 to do that. So remember on page 114, it was talking about how outsiders arrive. So when we look at that, just as a quick review, I will read just this top part again. Russians were the first to record reaching, reaching the area in 1741. In 1774, Spanish ships sailed up the Pacific coast from Mexico and encountered the Haida. Britain sent Captain James Cook to, reclaim a, to claim a foothold in the area in 1778. Russia and Britain were mostly interested in trading for sea otter fur. Eventually, Russian, British, and American traders competed for the fur trade. The people of the Northwest Coast were shrewd traders and they were happy to exchange fur, for pelt, fur pelts for guns, iron, sugar, blankets, flour, and sails for their canoes. However, contact with the new arrivals brought disastrous results. So when we're thinking about cause and effect, remember we're gonna put our cause on this left side and the effect over here. And I did go ahead and add, this is the why did it happen and what happened. So the first thing that I want to put is what happened. So we know that traders came from different parts of the world to the Northwest coast. That's what happened. But why did they come? Well, why they came was because they wanted to um, furs like the sea otters. So it had said that right at the beginning is that um, the Russian, Russia and British Britain were mostly interested in trading for sea otter fur. So let's go through and think of another thing that happened and why did it happen? Because remember, that is our success criteria thinking about what happened and why did it happen. So back to the text. In this section, it had said outsiders carried diseases that had never before existed in the Americas. Since people had never been exposed to these diseases, they had no immunities to them. Therefore, when one person caught a disease, it spread rapidly, wiping out whole communities. By some estimates, the Northwest Coast people lost 90% of their population between 1800 and 1900. Above is a Haida cemetery. So again, let's think about what happened. Well, many of the Northwest Coast people became very sick, right? And why did that happen? Well, it said the people of the Northwest Coast didn't have any immunity. So their bodies had never um, seen these diseases before, never had to fight them off. So they didn't know how to fight them. So that really hurt them and their ability to actually fight them and survive those diseases. Okay, so we're gonna do one more. It says before long, the animals that the people, and I'm, we're gonna look at this bottom section this time. Before long, the animals that the people had depended on for food had been hunted for fur almost to extinction. Remember, that means that there are no more left in the area. For food and other supplies, the people had to rely more and more on trading posts set up by the Russians, Spanish, and the British. Traders kept increasing the price of supplies needed to force the people to provide more furs. Sometimes the owners of trading posts refused to sell supplies or closed up and moved away. Many of the people starved. So again, what happened this time? Let's think. Did you say that the native people had to depend more on the trading post? That's what happened, but why did that happen? Why did they have to depend more on those trading posts? What happened to the animals and the food that they were already getting before? I'll remember that the animals that they were depending on were hunted almost to extinction for their furs. So they no longer were able to use those animals for food. All right, guys, this is the end. So your reading response. How did outside communities affect the native communities of the Northwest Coast? So thinking about how did like the British and the Spanish and the Russians coming to the Northwest, how did that affect the way that the Northwest Coast people were living?
I've given you a lot of examples already, so if you're paying attention to our lesson today, this should be a very easy question for you to answer. Just be sure that you do it in a complete sentence and support your answer with details from the text as always. All right, have a wonderful day. Do all of your work, be kind to one another, and I will see y'all later. Bye.